is finally here guys i have never been quite this excited to introduce a new faction of the game but as of like tomorrow we are officially getting the wookie faction this has always been like a really big deal for me i don't know if everyone who's watching it was playing about two or three or so years ago or whenever it was when nubaka or chupio came into the game he was actually released his, his first card came out with the wookie tag and i myself got really excited and i was like oh this is great we might get other wookies in the future like chrysanthemum or tarfler or whatever we didn't have at that time and then when the character actually came to the game i was just super disappointed because he didn't have the wookie tag and there was nothing going to happen with it uh but we've, we he's finally here tarfler is here he's brought not only the wookie faction in but he's the wookie leader who will be able to do a lot of fun things with the wookies and maybe one or two other characters kind of filled in but ultimately it's just kind of a really cool place to be in the game where we filled up to the point where we can actually have a lot of these species have full factions we now have a tuscan faction a wookie faction a genosian faction Maybe one day we'll get my much beloved uh, Gungan faction, but that's for a later time. Anyways, what I want to talk about today, a little bit about the kit, where I think it's going to stand in the current meta, or even in the metas that are currently below Kyber, Rodium, and whatnot for people who are building rosters. And then on top of that, talk about where this is going to fit in counter-wise, what, what teams are going to beat it, what comps it's going to need to be able to do it, and such and so forth. So yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right into his kit. Luckily, one of the best pieces of news that I have to share, other than the fact that we have the Wookiee faction, is just the fact that this is a really simple kit. Most of the mechanics are just straight buffs, debuffs, damage, defense. It's not some really convoluted kit where we're making up new terms. As much as I realize that's necessary in a lot of the cases, it does make it a little bit easier to swallow. Uh, so yeah, basic. This is probably the best basic in game. I know that doesn't go very far because basics within themselves aren't super great to begin with. But it does four really cool things. Number one, it de deals physical damage. That is one of the cool things. But it's a dispel. Dispels on basic are always really important because we have so many consistent taunters or just teams with multiple taunters right now. And then grant defense penetration up and defense up for one turn. So this is really cool because it's not just when he gets a turn, but whenever he's getting called into assist or as retribution or whatever, that he's going to be able to do that. He's going to be giving all these buffs. And we'll even see later that his leadership is going to take defense and use it as offense towards the enemy so it's four things but at, on the, at the same time it's also as a nesting doll so kind of a fifth thing because the defense is going to turn to offense uh protection up is good just because we're going to see they have stacking health to go with it and then defense penetration just always great especially with the amount of defense we have running around these days with things like uh savage uh wookie fury all allies gain another 25% defense stacking. Uh, that's going to suck. That is really going to be hard for a lot of teams to take down if the battle drags out too long. Because once you get 25% defense enough times, it does start to have diminishing values. But you just start doing like no damage to characters. Unless you're ignoring defense or have some type of exposed mechanic or something like that. Uh, because, yeah, that's that's a lot. Especially with all the other mechanics that are going to be wrapped into the fact that this does not end at the end of a turn. It's the end of the encounter. All Wookie allies to assist and stun target enemy. Very cool. Then you gain critical damage up for two turns. And or the attackers gain critical damage. Supports get like speed up. Taunts or uh, tanks gain taunt for two turns. This is really nice because we're going to see later. One of the things that CG is trying to do. And I don't know if this is going to come to full fruition. But they're really wanting to you to have a place for Clone Wars Chewie. Clone Wars Chewie's taunt is not consistent in the current meta. As we per previously mentioned with how dispels work. So having more ways to get him out there and taunting is going to be important. Assuming he's going to have a place on the team. And his next special. Dispel all debuffs on all allies. And they gain critical damage. Or 50% critical damage for two turns. This is cool because it's not the buff. So this is going to actually stack with the previous buff, and this can't be dispelled. So that is awesome. Wookie allies gain potency and tenacity up for two turns. Very good. A tenacity up is very versatile. Potency up is okay. And gain 10% max health stacking for the rest of the encounter. All enemies are inflicted with provoked for one turn, which can't be evaded, but it can be resisted. So that's interesting. Provoked. What is provoked? And we actually had a user mention that down here later in the, the forum. So we'll go ahead and show off a little bit of e3po's uh, advice here it is it gives a hundred percent counter chance but this character deals 90 percent less damage when they attack at a turn and whenever this character attacks at a turn they take damage equal to 90 or just not 90 20 percent of their max health so provoked is nice in that sense that you're not only going to be reducing damage from out of attack a turn or out of turn attacks you're also going to make them pay for it in their health but what gets even more dirty 
is when we look into his leadership, or is it his unique? Yeah, it's his unique uh, later on. Whenever an enemy attacks at a turn, all allies gain 25 speed, stacking up to 500. And I, I don't... I get, like, the maxes for a lot of things when they put them into kits and, like, oh, we need to have, you know, Jedi Knight Luke not get more than 20 speed from his unique. But 500? That's a really big number. Like, why put a max on there at all? And it's only for one turn. So that is pretty important for balancing purposes. You're not just going to have Wookiees immediately running around at 500 speed. Or you might, but then they'll get slowed back down. This is very similar to actually Nihilus. Uh, this is how he gains his speed in the Sith Raid, where if you hit him, he'll continually gain speed over the uh, over time. But every single time he cycles around a turn, it resets. So that's super cool. Max is very awkward. Uh, whenever an al Wookiee ally gains health up, all allies recover 50% health protection and gain advantage for one turn. This is a direct call out once again to Clone Wars Chewie. He does have health up on one of his specials. So if he uses that, he's effectively become the healer for the team. They're, they're, they're trying to push ways into the, all of our unused characters being used. We've seen this with Sorty, trying to bring T3 into a good home. We've seen this with Sana, trying to bring uh, Captain Han, and I guess, and Stormtrooper Han, both a home. Now we're, we're kind of getting into this niche where Clone Wars Chewie, for the first time in probably seven years, is gonna have a decent, at best, home. Uh, so that is pretty cool on his part. Tarful also gains 30% tenacity and 20 speed. Uh, whenever an ally is above the spell, Tarful gains 10% turn meter. That is pretty nice. It, it is going to make the tenacity up important on the kit too, because if he gets dazed, then all that kind of goes to crap. And then finally is leadership. And again, this is a very simple leadership. At the start of the, the battle, all Wookiee allies taunt, or Wookiee tank allies taunt for one turn. All allies gain 20% defense and Mac kill doubles for Wookiees. So again, we're seeing this covering of the weakness of Clone Wars Chewbacca. He has a hard time taunting. He can only do it once on a special. It goes away. It's not very good. So now we have three different ways to make Clone Wars Chewie taunt. And if you're wondering, yes, Zalbar is also probably going to be on the team. But he actually does a pretty good job of taunting on his own, even without even without mission on the team. Uh, whenever a Wookiee ally gains taunt, all Wookiee gains gain 10% defense stacking for the rest of the encounter. So again, we're seeing another defense mechanic uh, until the end of the encounter really what this looks like to me this team screams like is a defensive team that is just going to time anything out that does not have a way to look past defense unfortunately nowadays there are a ton of teams that have a mechanic that can look past defense you look at bad batch who are going to be dealing true damage whenever they have defense up or like a jtr team or rather fin team that has a lot of exposes that can just kind of cut through and go right forward max health damage rather than having to actually worry about defense um, so I'm not really, we'll get to their place in the meta here in a second. Uh, well, all Wookiee allies recover 50% health whenever there's, whenever a taunt expires. So Zalbor is actually going to be quite a bit more valuable than Clone Wars Chewie in that aspect because he's going to taunt a lot more. At the start of each allied Wookiee's turns, they gain 200% defense or e offense equal to their defense or offense equal to 200% defense until the end of the turn. That's going to be really nice. I... I can't actually say what that's going to do. These type of mechanics, we rarely see them. They come up every now and then where one stat translates into another. And especially without seeing the modifiers for the actual attacks, it's very hard to determine what this looks like. I don't think we have a defense to offense. General Grievous takes his health and converts it into offense. Uh, Boba, I believe, takes his potency and turns it into health. So this mechanic isn't exactly new, but at the same time, this could be nothing or it could be something. And I need to actually see the team in battle against a relevant team to draw that conclusion rather than just saying like, oh, this is going to make them obliterate everything. So big, big question mark on that, but interesting nonetheless. And then if there were no Galactic Legend enemies, interestingly enough, there can be allies. Whenever an allied Wookiee is critically hit, they reflect 50% of the damage dealt back onto the attacker. This damage can't defeat an enemy. So that is going... This last part, and I'm not going to completely die on this hill for a reason, but that is going to change how we are we want to mod the team at the end of the day. It's mentioned several times, and like I don't I'm not sure what these are called, like the developer things. Like, how do you want to mod them? They're always like, oh, defense, 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 defense. I don't really know how much defense you actually want to mod them with, specifically because of this last one. Like, you definitely, 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 definitely do not put defense primaries on them. Not only are they bad value, they're not as good compared to health primaries, even protection primaries, depending on what the kit does. But if we're looking to deal reflective damage, we want to have a larger health pool and the enemy to deal more damage than have a smaller health pool and have the enemy deal less damage. And having high defense is how you get the less health pool and less damage, because then we're going to be reflecting less. And again, I think this team might really run into the issue of timing out, depending on what that 
uh, defense to offense actually ends up looking like. So definitely a lot of cool things to look at. But while we're there, uh, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the team comp. What CG is subscribing for everyone is Clone Wars Chewie, Zalbar, Vet Han, as well as uh, Vet Chewbacca. I think this is going to be very okay-ish. And I think this is going to probably land somewhere along the lines of where Sana or even Sorty currently is in the meta, where if you have a limited number of teams, like I, this, I not not to brag, but like a 9.9 .9 million roster, I have, I have seven Galactic Legends, Sorty and Sana's teams are doing almost nothing for me. Like it's another team I can put on defense that Bad Batch will beat. And that doesn't really further me a lot. That being said, the vast majority of the player base is not at 9.9 .9 million. That's not really a relevant thought. So if you're in a place where either you love Wookiees or you've started to build your roster or maybe some, around some really cool scoundrel teams that already have you built up Zalbar and Vet Smuggler and uh, Clone Wars Chewy, this is going to be a great option. It's going to be a great B team that, again, I think is going to do a lot of really fun things on defense as far as time it goes, at least until everyone figures it out. That being said, I think there are some ways to really make it better. We obviously saw a lot of the synergy with Clone Wars Chewbacca with the health up and the taunting. Zalbar in general just has always had a really good kit. He's never really lacked that. He's more so lacked a good place to go. We, we found ways to plug and kind of play him with the uh, with, with the Ray team or even just kind of in any team that needs a tank that can auto taunt because one of the things that he can do in here that's super cool and I don't um, want any other ally Falls below 100% health, Zalbar gains Taunt and Retribution for two turns. This becomes wildly consistent because any single time that one of your allies, whoever they are, it doesn't matter, when they fall below 100% health and they go back above it again, you have another opportunity to proc Taunt for Zalbar. Now we have mechanics like Tenacity Up that can help prevent him from getting shocked or buff me or something like that that will stop this from getting triggered in the first place. And then you also, even if this isn't super reliable, we still have Clone Wars Chewie to kind of back us up. So I really do like the two of them in there, not just because they are essentially homeless in the modern meta, but because I think they, the way that CG is crafted, they're actually going to be somewhat decent. Now, while I really do like Clone Wars Chewbacca and Zalbar in the team, I think for this team to really eventually go to the next level, and I don't know if this ever does. I mean, there, there are Wookiees out there that they can add into the game. Uh, Han Har was a really cool one that we had from the KOTOR 2 game that maybe eventually will come if they're wanting to fill out that more. They apparently haven't totally turned away from the old republic but right now i'm looking at like veteran smuggler chewbacca's and hans or veteran hans kits they're not good they, they've been fairly outdated and they're not gonna synergize with this all really that well we looked at zalbar and chewbacca and they have a lot of this kind of timeout synergy concept going on where they're constantly gonna be taunting or healing or just making things take forever but if you look at start to look into their kits they just don't really do all that much of anything. I mean, we have some cool debuffs here, but there's not really something that expands upon those debuffs. I guess the only somewhat nice thing is a uh, veteran Han. You can never find him. He does have an AOE, and that AOE can maybe trigger a lot of the retribution that'll trigger attacks at a turn. So that is kind of nice. That being said, I I don't think you want to touch any of the other Wookiees. I don't I don't think this team is going to be the best team. But I don't think you are going to get a larger net positive by taking away from other teams. If we look at some of the other Wookiees that currently exist or out there right now, they're all in some of the best teams. Either Galactic Legend teams or the kind of the A- minus teams that sit directly below it. Like Kersantan. Kersantan has a wonderful place with Jabba right now. And then even beyond that, if you don't use him in Jabba, he's actually pretty darn good in Afra if you can get him to taunt every once in a while. And then along with that, the two rebel ones right now, not only do they not really seem that outfitted for the team in the sense that like their defense margins aren't really that great, but you don't want to take away these two characters from the CLS team. The CLS team, depending on the Datacrons that are in and out right now, are doing amazing things. Or even without the Datacron, they can currently beat, they've always been able to beat Gas. And I've been beating Jabba, I think, six times out of eight that I tried last season in 5v5. That is because of the Datacron. So really have a better place that i don't think i want to pull them from right now especially just because if you look at the way their kits are built like three people and chewy the allied leader is a rebel which he's not and whenever another rebel ally uses an ability which you don't have any of i guess if you put chewbacca in then you have one um and i don't know you i guess you could probably take the two of them and han and put the three of them in and that way um we get to use tarful's kind of limit where he gets to work with four wookies and one extra 
but then I feel like you're only going to get as good as a CLS team would get just without CLS. So I guess there's something to do there. I mean, we had someone recently comment on our video about the double Omicrons that you can use CLS with Akbar. And while that's really, that's really a bit of a downgrade for CLS, I don't really like that. If you're able to do this in a way that the rest of the CLS team also goes somewhere good, like maybe you don't have Cat and you need three appeal for the JMK, I don't know. I don't, I don't think you're going to want to do that, but I can see a few scenarios where people could actually reach out and be able to do that. So as far as comp goes, unfortunately, I think we're kind of stuck with what CG has given us right now, just because everything else results in a worse trade, unless you have very specific circumstances that allow you to do so. So lastly, what is this going to beat? Like what team are we looking at taking out either defensively or offensively? And there seem to be a few couple, or there seem to be a few mechanics that specifically are called out in this that are going to be able to be problematic. Number one, attacking at a turn. So this is going to be either counters or assisting because we have a ton of max health damage being dealt that way. And as well with Tarful's leadership, we're going to have the stacking up to 500 speed that should not negate, but really stiffen things for turn meter loops because if you can't exactly breach it, 500 speed is probably going to beat out anything out there except a galactic legend which this team doesn't really seem to be wired to build in the first place so the first thing that comes to mind is a team like imperial troopers where they, they keep going they have several dispels they're going to be trying to push tarp back he's going to start to gain turn meter the constant assisting they're going to be able to build up for that they might have a very outside chance at the cls team just because there is a stupid amount of uh, attacking at a turn or whether it be counters or assists the only thing that worries me there is we're gonna have to have a lot of potency on the field because typically see the way CLS teams are wired is they just have a lot of tenacity either through modding a datacron or even just nubaka sharing his stats around to the rest of the rebel ally so there is a little bit out there that i think is going to help them beat or even like the geo and the mon mothma teams that also have a lot of attacking at a turn that'll do a lot of max health damage to themselves but ultimately it might just be a timeout team that you're going to specifically you want another team that needs bad batch to beat it because maybe that's your strategy maybe your strategy is putting five teams in the bottom wall or four teams in the bottom wall that all need bad batch so overall i am very excited for the character just because i love the concept of wookies i think the game benefits from having a uh, a system where every single character can be used in a team so people can kind of pick what characters they like which ones they have an affinity to which ones they've already worked on and be able to slot them to the home and not just being completely hosed because they geared up a character they really liked like mace and mace didn't have a home for years and yeah it's very cool from that aspect for my roster where i currently sit i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal i guess it's probably worth a mention that we are going to have the territory battle and kashik my only i guess beef with that is it's not a special mission so there's some guilds out there that, like don't even need it like don't even need it all they can get three stars on it and then and they can get a few completions with wookies they don't even really need tarful to be able to do it so we i mean it, it's cool I, I like to be able to use wookies on kashik but at the end of the day it's not it's not that much of a gain different from Marin, who came out and you know not only lifts the night sisters and that's great and whatnot but Marin's also brings a lot of value in territory battles because she is going to be bringing a lot of get two for the pretty much the entirety of dathomir for long as long as that planet is there she will be bringing in get to assuming that you can actually beat the mission with our sevens that are required to enter so that is gonna be it let me know why you guys are excited and let me know too like what other wookie could they bring in to replace sorry veteran smuggler chewbacca and han um but you're not quite cutting it but until the next time stay awesome